All right, welcome back, everybody, this week to a brand new one of the guys. You already know who it is, Triz, DB. We got a, another special guest this week. Can't talk about enough how, how appreciative we are. This guy wanted to join us. Um, Thanks for coming on. Yeah, you go ahead. I, I'll let you introduce the uh, the guest because you always, you know, <laughs> you know how to do it. <laughs> it's Justin Renfro of uh, Buffalo Bills, offensive lineman. Thanks for ha coming on, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate y'all having me. So uh, we always ask the guests, like, pretty much how it feels to be back home because, obviously, you know, you've been around. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's always fun to be back home. You know, got home a few days ago. You know, had to do all the Philly things. Had to hit the shore one day. Yeah. <laughs> had to hit downtown a little bit. Right. And then I came to saw my mom. So, you know, it's all, always good to be back and stuff. Right. I saw, like uh, – <clears throat> On uh, Friday, you went to the AI event. Uh, the, I think it was like the 2001 jersey, jersey or something this, like that. This yeah. fool, man, here, man. So, yeah, uh, they released this 2001 playoff jersey. Uh -huh. And that was crazy for me for a couple reasons. One, because I played in uh, middle school for the AI-sponsored AU team. And uh -huh. then I also went to the 2001 playoff game with my dad. The, oh, the, damn. Uh, the, home Philly, the home Philly one. So. Right. It would, I mean, to be able to see him, and then I chopped it up a little bit with him, so it was cool. And you know, just see meeting other people. I met some like hip hop nation guys. Yeah, and, yeah. so yeah. yeah, I saw that uh, hip hop since nineteen eighty seven posted you, and, yeah, uh, dude too. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That's right, what's well, up, man? I'm so jealous you met him though, man. What did, yeah. you, did you get anything out uh, of him? Any like advice or? Yeah, he just said like you know like. Uh, I posted a couple of things on Snapchat, but you know how he does his whole thing about uh, just living every day, playing it like it's his last. Yeah, yeah. And it was crazy for him to say that again to you in person. Right. Yeah. Because you know you think ah he just rehearsed that. Man. Right. Right. That's he, really he, what he lived by. Yeah. That's really like that's what he told me. Like go play every football game like it's his last. He's like because you got to remember he he talked to me about it. His last football game was that championship game at Bethel. Right. Oh yeah. And he had like eight touchdowns. Yeah. Like, like four throwing. Yeah. And two. Right? And, and you went and to college, and you went to college in Virginia, so like yeah, was he, yeah. he was big time down there. Yeah, he went to yeah. University of Virginia as yeah. well. And he actually knows two of my teammates from Virginia and two of my coaches. So wow. Oh, it was crazy. It was, it was a lot of connections. I mean, that 757 area is pretty good football-wise. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I mean, to me, like, I think for whoever watches this and whoever listens to this, because a lot of this so far has just been a lot of people that we grew up with as far as in Pinsbury. And I think, like, it's going to be good for people to hear this episode just off the strength that, a lot of people still remember you, but don't necessarily remember you as a person to who you are today. They just remember growing up with you. So I, that's why I wanted to get you on here, because I feel like it's dope for people to find out, like, what's been going on with your life since you left Pensbury. Because I remember, like, when I moved here in eighth grade, that was before I knew. I didn't know nothing about, like, anything, but that was the last year that you went yeah. to Pensbury. So it was kind of like cool to meet you and stuff like that. And I'm like thinking, you know, growing up, like, oh, this is my road dog. Like, <laughs> two blocks down, we're going to be in high school chilling. And I remember, like, I always tell the story of people, like, whenever they say, like, you know, Justin, I'll be like, I'll never forget, like, eighth grade, when it had the eighth grade happen or whatever. My mom wouldn't let me go to the dance. And, like, Justin bought me a ticket anyway. And I, like, snuck out and still went to the dance. I was like, yo, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but... Like, just you and DB growing up, too. I mean, both of y'all tall as fuck, so obviously y'all yeah. have a lot of history as far as sports are concerned. But um, I got to ask you, like, what was the reason that you left Pensbury after eighth grade and why Penn Charter? Was it, like, something that was planned all along, or was this something that progressed? Um, <clears throat> well, it was a mix of things. I mean, y'all was y'all were at Penwood, so you know Miss Shane, Miss Niecy. Right. It was always on our back. Mm -hmm. And it just came to a point at the – like, my dad went to one of the public, I mean, one of the private schools in the League of Penn Charter. So, right. it was always talked about all his friends. Like, once I started getting ranked in the country, mm -hmm. all his friends and all the athletic directors started pressing him to come. But as y'all know, Episcopal moved even further out. Right, so right. Yeah. It was like, ah, we don't think you're going to do it. And so, the plan was to go to Pensbury. But it was that last three weeks of... Eighth grade, they did the stuff like we all remember. We all signed our lockers, yeah, like, yeah, the whole football team. That. 
We all signed our lockers. They tried to get me for graffiti. Me only. Wow. Nobody else on the team. So try to eye you pretty much had yeah. an eye on you. Yeah. You probably remember this. So I went to band. No, yeah, I do remember. That's the crazy part. I didn't know yeah. that any of this had to play a part in it. Yeah, so it wow. was that. It was it was literally the last three weeks. It was three different incidents. I mean, we don't have to go into all of them, but it was just three incidents. Well, you're a kid, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. exactly. And so my parents were just like, I mean, why are we going to leave him in this school? I went to, and so... And like at, this is after registration, so we had to do a mad rush. Like, right? Literally, I had to go take all the tests. I had to go uh, interview at all the schools yeah. and all that within mm-hmm. three weeks to be able to get into Penn Charter. Wow! And I and for the first two years, I had no scholarship too. Like wow. My parents were willing to pay for me to full tuition to not be in Pennsbury. So damn, I didn't even wow. know that. That's crazy. Yeah. So that was that's what happened because I mean that. That was the last three weeks. So. Yeah, that just shows how like how much they put they put into you know where you're at now. Exactly, because yeah. again, like again, as a kid, awesome. you know don't that. know yeah. anything. I just I honestly just thought it, it was, was going to be better. Thing, yeah. Right, I thought it was yeah. going to be for better. A exposure. lot of people. I mean, it was. Not, don't get me wrong, it was. We played, but I mean, Pensbury was playing big games. Right. still there. Yeah. We even played. We played Pensbury in basketball. Yeah. a couple but, times. So. I feel like you told me about that. Yeah, because he played both. Right, right. for first first two years. Of Pensbury. Right. So yeah, like we. I mean, it was the uh, yeah the it it was more a school thing, mm-hmm. and I went to Penn Charter. I went to Penn Charter, eighth grade, ninth grade. I went eighth grade through twelfth grade. Mm-hmm. I got one detention for chewing gum in meeting, compared to Pennsbury, right? Sure. Where pretty much they just <laughs> they made it. Yeah, yeah Pensbury, yeah, sure. they made it like I was a demon child. Right, so. right. <laughs> I mean, Damn. Yeah. So that's crazy. I didn't even know yeah. that. So was it hard for you to adjust to private school when you was trying to still maintain friendships that you pretty much already built? Yeah. So that was definitely a big thing because. When I went to private school, I had to repeat because right. they just make everybody repeat. So I would see all, I would come back on Fridays and I would always, for my first, my eighth grade year and my ninth grade year, I was able to come back on Fridays and go to basketball and football games and see everybody. Right, right. That's cool. Because I, I, eighth grade, we, I mean, I was in eighth grade, so we didn't have football right. games then. And then my ninth grade year, I tore my knee. Uh-huh. So I didn't play football at Penn Charter that year, so I was able. But my sophomore year, I started at Penn Charter, so that's when I felt like I lost touch. Like I hit people up on like Facebook, and I see people like Christmas and stuff. Yeah. And then after my tenth grade year, I played up in AAU basketball, and so I played for a AAU team based out of West Virginia. Uh-huh. So every Thursday night, I would fly to West Virginia, meet up and practice with my team. Right. And then we would fly out. And so from there, that's where I feel like. Kind of like the disconnect. It, yeah, because the, then I did that. Lot, yeah. yeah, I traveled. And then on top of that, you already wasn't going to the school. so Yeah, so it just started further and further. And, like, it got to the point where, like, I would only see, like, Dalton and Dave at tournaments. Yeah. And I lived yeah. right down the block. Right. But Damn. I was just, I was had to commute an hour to school. Yeah, yeah. Going so, to the Philly International every Thursday, so and then, so pretty much you was busy from the get, and then on top of that, trying to maintain yeah. it, it's already hard as is. And then I did, then my sophomore summer, I did the football camps, mm-hmm. and I got ranked for football. So then it was year round. I was traveling right. California, mm-hmm. all types of stuff. Right. So yeah. All right. So you're a two sport athlete for your first couple of years of high school, and then like after sophomore year. You pretty much gave up basketball. What went into that decision, and was that something that you were advised to do? Um, so it was. I mean, it really just became like, uh, like I like playing basketball, but I didn't like practicing basketball, mm-hmm. and I just I love practicing football. Like, and so it just became a thing. I mean, I was ranked in the area basketball wise and stuff, but I mean. My the start of my sophomore year, I got my first offer from Stanford. So mm-hmm. it was like, <clears throat> all right, we'll do basketball again because it's keeping me active. Right. And then I remember the end of my sophomore summer, we finished number five at nationals in basketball. My AU team did, and I was just like, all right, Dad, we like it. right. We, yeah, I, it's kind of obvious of what you want to do. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I mean, I finished five. I finished this basketball thing out. Like, then. I did pretty well at it. Right, right. And then I had gotten invited to the Nike Top 100 camp. And that was the first time it was like, all right, 
My basketball team was going to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I had this invite for the Nike camp. So it was the first time like I had to decide between the two. Right. And I was like, man, I got to go to this Nike camp. It's the top 100. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up, I think I got like, that's when I was still playing tight end. So right, I ended right. up being like the number eight tight end in the country from that camp. Right. There you go. And so from there, it just, I played basketball one more season just for the school. Mm-hmm. And then after that, my senior year, I was just focused strictly yeah. on football. Yeah. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. So I read that like pretty much you would travel to Virginia for basketball camps early on in high school too. And then mm-hmm. uh, the football coaches were actually scouting you for themselves. Yeah. Were you like aware at the time or were you too busy focusing on the rivers and you, that you were there to um, begin with? So Penn Charter. So Penn Charter we've had for, it was like, Every year since I was in high school, we had a player go play basketball at Virginia, and mm-hmm. so uh, I would we so they just kept inviting us to the team camp to see all right who we could get next. So right. they had Sean Singletary, mm-hmm. then they had Sammy Zaglinski, and then it was like my time. Wow, Sammy Zaglinski was a yeah gamer. Yeah, he's right by him. So he uh, so once it became then, and I was down there. I mean, they invited, they recruited me. I went to a couple of games. Mm-hmm. But the football coaches, they just started coming. And then my actual AAU coach in West Virginia, at that time, Rob Pruitt was the one of the head defensive coaches. Right. And they went to college together. And so he he was putting it in my coaches here AAU-wise. Like, I don't know if Virginia is going to be his basketball school. 